Hey everybody, this is Donna Woods with Photonic Health and in this edition of Health Made Simple, my special guest today is Carrie Bowser. Miss Carrie is a three-star Pirelli instructor and she is based out of Eastern Canada near Montreal, about 45 minutes from the Vermont border. So she is very close for all of those Eastern United States people. And um, Carrie and I, we have known Carrie for a long time, since basically we started our company. And um, we have just become friends with her and we absolutely adore her. She's got some of the most beautiful energy of anybody we have ever met. And she is just <clears throat> a true horsewoman in her own right. And so today I thought it would be great to um, introduce you guys to her and just give you a sneak peek of like what we chat about when we chat about things. So Carrie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And it's wonderful to have this time with you and chat together. Yeah. Yeah. And always talking horses is always a great thing, right? It always is. Always, yeah. always, always. always is. Um, so Carrie, how long have you um you're a Pirelli three star instructor, and that's no that's no easy feat. That's no no, feat. no they don't give those stars away easily. No. So it, you know, no. and it's a two-sided thing because I think when you start off as a one star, it kind of keeps you safe because you're on the ground. And then you can start, you know, working on your teachermanship. And then when you get the second one and you have a little group that's all riding, you know, I I, I felt that big jump of responsibility. Um, and then as you go into the three star, then you can have people, a little more people, a little longer time, you know, and, and that, you know, that gradual progression, I, I think has been good, good for me. And uh, it keeps you safe because as you get more people, longer times, there's more things that come up. Right. And a lot of people in their horsemanship journey, a lot of things come up in terms of mental, emotional, physical. Um, and you're just better equipped, you know, to, to handle it by the time you get there. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And um, so what exactly, like, what are your specialties and what clients mm -hmm. do you have the most impact with? Right. Great question. Over the years, I, I, I've i learned what I love. And that's, and that's when people come, um, take some time out of their busy lives and come in and invest some time with me here. We've built a facility that's modeled after the campuses uh, were open from May to October. And, and then people can really do a deep dive into their horsemanship uh, and live it more than they could at home in their facility when you're really on a schedule. Um, yeah, so, so throughout the time we visit coming and going, we schedule time, just very, very flexible as things come up we have a rough plan in the beginning and it evolves in which direction it's sure. going to go and yeah so fabulous yeah yes it, it all goes according to the horse's schedule right yes yes exactly yeah um, and i think that's well, part of the thing like brian and i have been involved in the pirelli program um oh god since 2002 and that's actually how we found red light therapy was through pirelli and um and so through that, like through the, and even after all these years, like um, of having horses and, and, you know, training and doing different things with them, they still have things to teach you every single day. Every single day. And things you realize that you went aha uh -huh about like years ago. And then all of a sudden you're just, okay, well now I get it. Right. <laughs> you know, right. you just get things at a deeper and deeper level. Well, yeah. and, you know, something with me recently is the fact that, you know, because I've got um, six horses and so, mm. you know, three of them have gone through the program that, you know, Brian and I took through ourselves. And, you know, once they 
I don't want to say once they know it, like once like that partnership established, that trust is established, that connection is established, yeah. like, um, and they're all, tw- those three are 28 years old now. So like, there's never been a, you know, like I know where they're at and they know where I'm at. And it's, yes. a be- it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful relationship. But recently I got a new horse and, um, and and so, and he, he was already, he already came, he came from another Pirelli person and he, you know, like, and she's a fabulous horse woman mm-hmm. and, but relationships and respect does not transfer. And so I actually had to take about 10 steps back and go, okay, wait a minute. Yes. This horse is a good horse. He rides nice and he's obedient, but he's not connecting with me. And you know, just to have that. And it's been a long time since I've been in that position. Yeah. Cause your relationships have evolved yeah. in, in different ways with each one of them. Yeah. And yeah, well, that's the thing about relationships, right? Human or animal it's time. Yeah. It's just right. time. Yeah. Time. yeah. time. But that's one of the things that I love about the Pirelli program is the fact that I was able to go, um, Oh yeah. I need, I need to go back to the beginning. Like yes. I need it for me. He doesn't need it, but I need it for me and him as a partnership together. Yes. Yeah. And back to the beginning. And then the more you talk about people in other sports or other, um, you know, experts in their field is is the back to the the basics. And, and one a big revelation I learned about a couple of years ago are these people that have the you know two black belts. And I thought, well, they just keep going further, but no, they come back to the beginning, and then they do it through the eyes of an expert. Yeah, you know, and so they redo back to the the very first step. Yeah. And then of course it's excellent. And it's it's excellent yeah. and and the thing of it yeah. and that's why i love that um it's going to sound like i'm touting the pirelli program and promoting the pirelli program because well i am because it's a great program yeah, um, yeah. it's a great program and and at the end of the day i still think it's probably one of the most comprehensive horsemanship programs out there from um, what i've seen because there's more and more and yeah. um yeah, you kind of keep a tab on what's going on out there and yeah. uh, kind of visit with other people and see what they're about and so many yeah. interesting aspects of it. But as far as a step-by-step, no, I, I haven't found it anyways. Right. Yeah. Well, and the, yeah. the other aspect of it is, is that he has these professionals out here like you where, you know, yeah. you can, you know, cause so much stuff is online these days, but yeah. Um, I still think that there's nothing better than having in-person lessons because it's, it's a lot. It's, I think as much about the energetics as it is about the mechanics. Yeah. And I think the energetics don't, doesn't necessarily come through like on a video. No, no. And then um, we're not always conscious uh, of what we're doing. And so you know, the halfway point and having, having an instructor come and, and, um, and spend time with you is invaluable and also videoing yourself because sometimes looking at that video, right. You know, in the body language, it's, it's so helpful too. Yeah. Cause then we see us in that moment and then, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, with the pivot now, it's this, this pivot thing has changed everybody's lives. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what drew mm. you like, what, how did you start down your path? Yeah. Yeah. So I was a city kid and loved horses. I had family had horses. And then at 40, you know, I was at the point where my husband bought me a horse and thought I'd go to the barn a couple of times a week. Uh-oh. So, yeah, that's how it started. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So in between there, I rode at an eventing barn, you know, just went and hung out and lessons and, and, um, you know, then you're helping out, helping them out and riding more and riding more horses. And, and it started there and then, you know, got my own horse. And of course, you know, I was going to go and go back to eventing and it was going to be perfect. And then, we went back and did an event and I think I literally held on to her by her eyelashes. Like she was just, <laughs> I don't, you know, like she just raced through that whole thing. So um, a lot of go and zero woe. So, so that's why as it started, you know, the, the, the little poster was up there in the area and I thought, what is this? And uh, took the first clinic and, and I was almost like, I was upset after the first clinic because I thought, how could I be so many years in horses? And I've never heard, you know, never heard anything about what this is like. And I was just one of the what the ones that went up to the desk and bought the red box and right. and just dove in. Yeah, I, I yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I love I love yeah. that. Well, you know, yeah. I think there's a um sometimes there's some misinformation out there about. Pirelli and about the Pirelli program and they think that you very know, much very like much. the instructors don't ride or the students don't ride or anything like that and They're too tough and, too soft too, uh, right yeah. and so when you actually start digging in like I didn't know that you were an inventor I had no idea you were an inventor yeah lots of good times lots of good times on you know these are horses that are in eventing facilities so they're all right. you know yeah yeah, so yeah, they're I mean, athletes. Yeah, they're athletes and they're doing it regularly. And then when you get your own horse and you're thinking, well, I'm just going to jump right in there. Um, right. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work, doesn't like work that way. way. They have their own agenda. Yeah, yeah. So then it's like, you know, 10 years later, when you're having to have bought a trailer, bought a farm, and then actually needed to retire that horse and get another horse, I went back and did an event. <laughs> You know, ah, so yeah, they're, they're um, yay. that's awesome. Yeah, uh, it was a big sidestep. Um, yeah. but yeah, and now you come at it from a totally different place. I'd be so nervous driving to this thing and wondering why I was doing it, and so, um, and then to go back, you know, 10 years later and just, uh, just my own personal goals, it was uh, right. have fun. And remember all of my courses, you know, right. and I did. Right. So yeah. I was successful. Didn't matter. Yeah. Who was in there. Um, Correct. Correct. Yeah. Well, yeah. Very different. Eventers place. are in. Sorry. Eventers are crazy. Like we're crazy. You, but we're at the we're at the low level, like the 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 gap, the canter through the woods level, you know, just very <laughs> civilized. Nothing ridiculous. <laughs> And nothing, nothing difficult. Just what cross country show jumping and dressage all in one event. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah that's yes, all. Yes. Well, that's yeah. all. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. Um. So, like, um, what is like? What would you say? Um is your greatest accomplishment like as an instructor like what just feeds mm. your soul Jesus. oh what yeah mm. uh, it's really that that look in a student's face you know that kind of opening <gasps> where they finally really understand something and right. and then as an instructor, you'll just about do anything, you know, right from, um, you know, simulations to crossing over that silly bridge to just to get that. And then, you know, when you finally figure it out uh, and the student just gets it on a deeper level and they and, and another statement is like, you know, you're explaining that balance between especially for women, you know, being firm and being right. fair and then they say well I'm so like that in my life and then you know then we can talk about what that means and what what firm means and what you know being unfair means and leadership means you know there's good leadership and there's bad leadership and for a while leadership was getting a really bad rap well 
I don't mean being an autocrat, <laughs> you know, right. that's not the leadership right. we're, we're talking about, but you know, the leadership where you're going to go into battle and, and die for the guy next to you, like what leadership is that, you know, and right. that leadership is based on love and understanding and, um, and, and that's the kind of leadership that we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad you talked about that because this is something like not, it, it's hard to put words to from the, if you're an outsider looking in at the Pirelli program, mm -hmm. but it's about the, um, can you talk more about the parallels between what's going on with your horse and what's going on with your everyday life, if you will? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, or maybe struggles in your everyday life that seemingly are unrelated to horses. You're right, right. I think for a while, well, talk on the personal side then is is the emotional fitness side, yeah. you know, um, where somehow through this process, um, the emotional part, um, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be at a loss of words here, but the emotional fitness as we evolve, and if we, you know, and so often we'll do all this for our horse where we don't do it for ourselves, um, but our horse needs us to be grounded, and so if we get emotional, they're gonna say, "Well, you're no leader for me," <laughs> you know, for some types of horses that are looking for that. And then other types of horses that are looking to push your buttons and get you frustrated. Well, you're certainly no leader for me. So then, you know, it, it, it involves then having this middle of the road and, you know, you're having your emotions, um, you're having your awareness and it's, I don't say not living emotions, but you're very much conscious of them. They're not, they're not, they're not you. controlling you yeah yeah and yeah, so yeah. yeah and it's almost like developing this this mind that watches you you right. know yeah that's the other part of the of the i or the me is the part that's watching you going through all this and um and once you're conscious of it you can start being more rational about it and so all of this it, if you can believe it is you know it's evolved through the horses and so i can watch the horses go through their emotions and then be there to help them and then so then they have somewhere to follow and then we start talking about my kids you know how do we you know how how does it you know i'm a better parent so you know a quick story with with my daughter at the time was you know, she needed to go clean her room. And I thought, well, this is a phase one. Right. And she laughed and their face came alive and she wanted to know what the phase four was. So she could judge whether that was, and that is a phase four. It's enough to help you make a change. Right. And so I said, cause I had no idea. I said, well, you don't want to know. <laughs> and then it became a game. Oh, yeah. And then she went and cleaned her room. And then she asked me later and says, well, what was the phase four? <laughs> I said, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I can't remember exactly what I said, but you know, and it's how to make this, how to make things a, a game and fun. And as I'm talking about, I think that's it's also too, is how to how do you get more fun? How do you you things um, you know, through the horse, how do I make it fun? Right. And become an indirect thinker. You know, it's it's like, well, if it's, you know, do it this way, but how can I come at it another way? I think it's also helped me in that solving problems. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I just love the fact when you uh, talked about that you've got, the, we're, because we're human, so we are, we're mm -hmm. a human being having an emotional experience. And I think so often that our inner dialogue sort of runs and rules us until we can separate mm -hmm. that and be able to be somewhere outside of ourselves and being able to have a more objective view of what's actually going on and going, yeah, that doesn't, no, nope, yeah, I know you're, I know what's going on in there and that, that doesn't work or that doesn't serve me so well. Um, mm -hmm. So I love that you brought that up because that's 
really, um, you know, from what I understand, especially like the works of M Michael Singer. I don't know if you've heard of Michael Singer. Oh, yes. Yeah. Reading um, his last book now. Yeah, he's incredible. He's actually only 45 minutes from us. I understand so we, that. I heard. You know to his temple. Um, you do. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. next on my list to come down. Come on down. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. but it's so interesting to be able to uh tie his work like that work or that aspect of it because he's got such an eloquent way of verbalizing what all of that every day in yep, an language. everyday yeah. thing but yeah. i really had never even thought about it from a horsemanship perspective but now that you brought mm. it up it just absolutely makes sense it, like it totally makes sense oh totally that's so sense. cool donna yeah you know when you're <laughs> horse and like how interesting like i can feel that that frustration feeling and then just kind of watch it come up and it's go oh yeah that's that that feeling <laughs> right. right exactly yeah. and and I also love the fact um you know because I think there's a lot of people out there that have gone through level one in Pirelli or have looked at the level one in Pirelli and they've never really progressed through the program mm -hmm. any further than that mm -hmm. and I know mm -hmm. at the higher levels it's you know refinement 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 and so um can you speak more like like on like the different phases like um, you bet i love that i love that question donna thank you for asking that so the level one two like it, it's the level one two is is i look at it more of the technical side like you need to understand well first in level one how does this be safe and your space and how to get the horse out of your space um and then level two is you know the fun level where we we start playing with more obstacles but it's really still learning how we can use the tools be effective start connecting with our energy and it's just really you know it's step this um uh it, it, it's it's more of a, a much te technical aspect and if we can keep people uh, interested up to that point that they then the fulcrum is as then they come into level three that's where the magic happens right right and then they're it's sort of like with red light therapy if you buy a oh, red light therapy device yeah. and you use it and you put it where it hurts you're gonna get some good results but the magic right. really happens yeah the more you learn <laughs> yes and understand how that yeah right yeah how it all all those points and matching the points and the lights and understanding yeah. how that's all connected and yeah so um really is it because sometimes they can get a little dry yeah um, but if we can just keep people interested in as they get into the really the depth and then into level three we're talking about balancing emotions we're talking about flexion and really then being able to help our horse become better athletes no but matter flexion, what kind of flexion person. but flexion yeah. not from a mechanical perspective flexion from a partnership and an emotional perspective yes well that's the thing i mean to have physical flexion we have to deal with the mental first yeah correct Mentally, yeah. Emotional. i wanted to i wanted to put that in there because there's a mm. i mean you know we live in ocala we're you know we're horse capital of the world and so yes. we have a lot of competitors and they're fab fabulous riders and they're fabulous there's a lot of where yeah we can mechanically get connection yeah. but it's the longevity of the horse's health and also the relationship. And so that's why I'm glad you brought that up because the Prelude program is about getting the partnership aspect of it, the emotional aspect of it from a collection perspective, not just the mechanical yes. aspect of it. Right, right. Yes, yeah. the flexion. You will flex now. Correct. <laughs> We're not talking about that. No, 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 no ways to make it flex. Yeah. And, and sometimes yeah. it's so hard to be able to put into words the energetic component of the program. Yes, it is. It is. You know, it's such um, a loosey goosey kind of term. And right. even like, a, you know, to be more connected, that's really loosey goosey. And, um, you know, so I would hazard a guess people don't know 
how deep it can go. Can be. Correct. Because they've not experienced it. Correct. Correct. And so, yeah. And this is where, you know, if, if people have faith in their instructor and, and, um, you know, just in their gut feeling, feel they're in the right place. They're not right. sure where it's going, but yeah. you know, you, you, you know, you, you pick your program, um, no matter what it is, pick it and then dive deep. Yeah. 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 I the surface stuff is just to kind of kind of get you going and you know past a little bit the awkward stage so now we can go go, go do some cool go, stuff go. cool stuff yeah i love yeah. that i love that um as a equine professional what is the question you find yourself answering the most yeah um there's two answering well people are so perplexed my horse is always in my bubble like right. they're really perplexed about that. <laughs> right you know and then if there's one thing to change in the horse world is this ridiculous thing of you know walking with your horse on a tight tight rope right it's the most ridiculous thing um you yeah. know the roots made sense but it sure doesn't make sense anymore and then um the other question is people say oh i want to i want to be more connected and i want to um be a better horse person and again right. really just go yep great you're in the right place but it's not really an easy question to answer a how to it's just right um really about getting them steered in the right direction and right. in trying to get them little successes that's yeah. going to encourage them to keep going. Because at the end of the day, you know, we all want to feel successful. Um, right. And then we need to explain all the why the awkward means we're learning and, you know, right. yeah, exactly. to try and get them over that hump. And adults were so proficient, but now we're going to go be like kids again and be super right. awkward and we're going to love it. Right. <laughs> so kind of handhold them through all that, all that process. Oh, I love that. And, you know, while you were talking about that, one of the images that popped into my brain was about if you look at your horse as being another person, mm -hmm. right? And if the horse is talking to you and you keep yelling at him or ignoring him or not taking his feelings into consideration, is that mm -hmm. a relationship that you would want to have like so if it were like if i were interviewing you and i would just totally blow everything off and go carrie that's not the way it is and you really need to do it this way you would sort of be like okay yeah i'm out of here and not really want to spend time right like that's yeah. not like start tuning out a little bit yeah, yeah. tuning not tuning invested out. yeah right and so yeah. that that was the image that popped into my mind was as if we just sort of like had like view it as this is our horse but view him as a human being in, in a sense and that we're having this and conversation but a conversation yeah. and a connection is a two-way street yes otherwise yeah. it's just you know a very weird thing <laughs> dynamic yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah if you could provide our audience with a couple tips that they could implement at home to improve their relationship with their horses, what would it be? To improve their relationship with their horse? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of tips are, yeah. Mm. Yeah, what could they implement today? In a very general sense? Yeah. I, you know, just accessible to anybody is, Go take your horse and take him for a walk with no, yeah, no purpose. Take him for a walk. And I can add to that is, is harmonize with their feet. Ah. That, because that's how they want to be and we're not. Right. But if you go for a walk and you make it a point to always match their front feet 
in a not long while, they will now know that you know. Very cool. I have, yeah. I have actually, I've heard the take your horse for a walk with no agenda. This is the first time I'm hearing the front feet. Oh my gosh. And then if you, if I watch somebody walking with their horse and they've made a point, because if you do it long enough and the horse knows that, you know, they will always match to you. Super cool. With time. So then when you look at somebody who's, it might be by chance, but or you know it's important to them that they are harmonized right they look together yeah they just look like a unit um uh -huh. but if you do that consistently and and are really particular about it um then they will sort of start shifting like i'll get with you well then we'll be together and then you can start playing with your i'll go walk faster are you with me i'll go walk slower mm -hmm. are you with me Okay. you know and then you can go for a little trot are you with me and then come back and then and then you're just together and and i love that yeah i yeah. love that yeah i do that at the end of the day when people kind of burnt a little bit like mentally a little bit i'll kind of end with something easy and really nice like that right and uh, yeah so that's one thing that's really nice and um, and as far as a second thing, um, trying to think, uh, I think in the, the other thing that I always ask when I walk into a space, like a, an arena or when we're going to do something together is, is, uh, uh, in the warm up, I'll just always ask the question, what do you need me to be for you in this moment? What do you need? Yeah. This is your time. Right. Yeah. Is it to just yeah. hang out or you like got a little buzz and we need to go move around a little bit and um yeah. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um I love I love those because those are the easy things like somebody easy can things, implement yeah. right today. Um mm -hmm. from a long-term perspective, people mm -hmm. that are out there that are sort of they've got this horse, they don't know what to do with it. Maybe they're having some behavior, I'm gonna put in quotation marks, behavioral issues. Um, mm -hmm. what do you recommend for people like that? Like that call you, they've got quote unquote a problem horse or mm -hmm. they're having uh, challenges. Oh, uh yeah well the first thing is they need to be heard so just right. hear them out and then and then once that and they've um shared what they've been wanting to share then we can get us to some list logistics but no matter where they are lots of experience no experience then it's right. it's you, you, if if you're calling me then it's you need to come see me Right. You know, and then how do we how do we set you up? You know, and the beauty of it is if you're limited finances, we can just get you in the, you know, on, on the member site. OK, that's should on be the member site. Yeah. 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 And you can follow that. And then, you know, we can you know, always say if if you want to get started, you know, get on the site, plan a clinic once a year. Yeah. And some lessons around that. That that's a that's a minimum if you want to feel successful. Right. I love yeah. That. So I, I try to steer them that way. And and then and then I really try to walk away. <laughs> uh, let it go. Because some people yeah. do and some people don't. Yeah. You know, and then and then it's like, you know, when you let them go, will they come back? Right. Right. And and so I kind of just turn that off and the rest is up to them. And if they come back, oh, that's super, let's get started. And if they don't, then, you know, it didn't resonate with them on some level and, and that's fine. They're yeah. going to go yeah. their own way. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, is there anything else you would like to add? that we haven't chatted about that you would like yeah, to bring? I think, yeah, Donna, and that's, um, you know, in, in terms of having a, a happy horse life, there's, there's components, you know, there's the, um, is the education part is having a horse life is, is the educational component of it. But, right. but then the other one is health, 
you yeah. know, and then I'm rural. So, and, you know, a financial budget. And so the more I can do myself and be self-sufficient, right. um, the better. So, so that's where you guys come in, you know, and, and I can keep my horses as healthy as I'm able to. And, and, right. um, and that's what I love about your product, Donna, is that it, it enables me to be, um, independent and, and, and empowers me more to be able to take, to take care of my horses. And, um, yeah, we've hosted a couple clinics here, uh, with Brian, the level one and the level two. And, um, you know, when I met you and bought my first light 2010 <laughs> out of the McLaren light, that right. lady, um, you know, since then I can't count the times that you know, there's a few colics I've saved in there and then um, just general health along the way. Right. Um, so, so along the way, we need to learn about horse health and, um, yeah. you know, how with the best of my ability and knowledge, um, can I help my horses? So it's that, that part is another huge aspect of being successful with horses. Yes. So thank you yes. guys. Oh, yeah. you're, welcome. you're welcome. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're all, you know, we've been part of the Pirelli uh, program since 2002. And, you know, in 2004, like we learned about red light therapy. And so we went off in a different direction, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, you know, being a partner and having a connection with somebody or mm. a horse is also they like I think Pat has a saying what like, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care yeah and man you know like we've been into horses now for 28 years and with six or eight of them at any given time like mm. they, it's so true because like if if they're sick like my horses know like yeah. you know our connection is there so like if one of them's in trouble like they are like we come in and they they're they like come see you yeah yeah, yeah they, they walk come, up they walk right up they call out like they they're like hey where are you hurry up like you know they're really good that way but i think that's part of that whole horsemanship aspect of it the horsemanship mm -hmm. doesn't start the minute that you sit in the saddle the horsemanship starts the minute that you think about going out to do something with your horse. Yes. And that energetic aspect of it, you know, just that feeling of it and mm -hmm. about, you know, it'd be like if you and I were going to lunch and as I'm getting ready, I would be like, oh, I'm so excited because I'm going to see Carrie today. And, yeah. you know, as I'm driving to lunch and, you know, just have that, that, that energetic component of it versus looking at, the horse as a vehicle as a vehicle versus you know a living breathing creature let me ask you something you know i because I, I i've heard this and then it's like oh made me think about it sometimes is like well we we're talking about energy and their energy is you know you have them at home i have them at home and they can sense energy well they can sense the energy around your house so i'm thinking like absolutely ah you know if they're sensing this energy, then it's yeah. like, oh man, I, yeah. I'm responsible for that a little bit. Yeah, um, if you're the owner of the property, you absolutely are. Ah, uh, so that's kind of that's that's a lot. It's you know? a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah I felt yeah. that was a lot. Yeah, yeah, Get yeah. My act together. Yeah. Well, oh come on. Oh, oh. my gosh. You're yeah. You're always so hard on yourself, Carrie. You're yeah. just absolutely amazing. And your energy is Thank just you, Dawn. It's very kind. Very yeah. nice and um, easy to be in. So um, you don't need to worry about that. Your you heart's in the right place. If somebody's heart's in the right place, it always yeah. works out, right? Yeah, it works out. So if people would like to get a hold of you, Yes. Uh, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, yeah. So um, my email, or I'm on Facebook too, Carrie okay. with K A R I and Bowser. I don't know how many are of 
um, people out there with that same name, but right. um, it'll have a horsey in the picture. Yeah. Um, says, yeah. So just reach out. Um, Facebook. I'm not Instagrammy so much. Just not enough hours in the day. And um, website. Oh, horses. Yeah. <laughs> What's your yeah. website? Um, CarrieBowser.com. I got Carrie that Bowser. one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So reach out and um, if yeah, video, whatever, coaching, or you just have questions, confused, Perfect. want to debate. I love debating. Oh my gosh. I really? love debating. Yes. Because it's like, well, you know, people have this opinion and, and uh, like a opinion, but open, right? And it's like, I, I thought it was this way and I'm confused about why it's this way. And then I can explain, well, maybe it's this way because it's this. And that's why, anyways, I love it. Like people that have had horse experience from before right. and they're trying to mesh what they know in with the horsemanship side. Right. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's very, it's very different, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But there's, there's, there's ways they come together and then some things, you know, they don't fit in. And then, and then that's part of the discussion. Like if you want to do that, that's going to be the end of the road in that. But, you know, if, if we talk about another strategy or another theory and, and right. how through the horsemanship, it would grow and that's where it's going. Um, I love those discussions. Yeah. 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 One more yeah. philosophical and like yeah like yeah probably done it. yeah like just more like more philosophical the philosophy more and the theory and that well yeah this works great except for this and whatnot so i love that yeah. that's awesome that that that's absolutely awesome this was lots of fun yes i'm so happy to connect with you because i know you're super busy yeah. um so i talk with with the office but i don't get to talk to you so often well, anybody, if you guys have a horse or if you're interested in horses, you're interested in natural horsemanship and you uh, feel a connection with Carrie here through my interview, or if you are in Eastern Canada near Montreal or the upper, upper the New United Englanders, the yeah, New Englanders like um, yeah. I guarantee you that Carrie is the absolute cream of the crop and um, you would learn a lot from her. If you're interested in red light therapy, she is also an ambassador for our company. She has been since 2010. So she does have a lot of experience around that. Um, and feel free to reach out to her if you have any red light therapy questions as well. And please go ahead and take a uh, look, her, look her website up. And I'm sure she would love to hear from you guys. So Carrie, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate thank it. You, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.